Hi, I'm Kobayashi from Sony. In this video, I will explain the fundamentals of deep learning along with the history of the neural network. In a nutshell, deep learning is a technology that uses the neural network to simulate the learning functionality of the brain with a computer. Now, what is this neural network? It is believed that there are more than 100 billion nerve cells in our brains. These nerve cells receive electrical signals from other nerve cells through a branch-like part of a tree called a dendrite. It transmits electrical signals to the next nerve cell through this axon when the electrical signals received are above a certain level. The strength of the synaptic connections determines how easily the electrical signal from one nerve cell is transmitted to the next nerve cell. It is believed that these nerve cells in our brain exchange electrical signals to achieve their intellectual functionality. Artificial neurons are computer simulations of the functionality of these nerve cells. These artificial neurons, denoted as X1, X2, and X3, show the strength of the electric signal emitted by other nerve cells. And for this other neuronal electrical signal, the weight W represents the strength of the synaptic connections between the nerve cells. If this W is large, the electrical signals emitted by other neurons are transmitted directly. If W is close to zero, even if a large electrical signal is emitted, it is hardly transmitted. Thus, the strength of the electrical signal in this nerve cell is determined by multiplying it by a weight W1 for X1, a weight W2 for X2, and a weight W3 for X3 in order. Then the activation function F is used to realize the functionality of the nerve cell. If the value is above a certain value, the electrical signal is transmitted to the next neuron as it is. And if it is below a certain value, no further electrical signal is transmitted. And the result of going through this activation function is the output value of this neuron. In this way, artificial neurons can be used to realize the mechanism of nerve cells on the computer. The neural network is a combination of these artificial neurons. For a neural network, various possibilities exist depending on the combination of the artificial neurons. Today, I will explain this neural network with an example of image classification, which is one of the typical applications of the neural network. This neural network consists of the image input layer, the intermediate layers of about 1 to 2 layers, and the output layer. In this neural network, electrical signals coming in from the left are sent to the right in turn to get the output. The input layer in image classification corresponds to the retinal cells in the back of our eyes. Retinal cells have the role of converting light entering the eye into electrical signals. The intensity of the incoming light determines the strength of the electrical signal. This is the input layer for image classification. When actually processed by a computer, each pixel of this input image has an input neuron, and the luminance value of this neuron is directly entered into the input layer. Then multiply and add the value of the input layer in the intermediate layer of 1 to 2 layers. By multiplying and adding a certain weight to the value entered in the artificial neuron equation, and again multiplying and adding the strength of the electrical signal of neurons in the next intermediate layer is determined. Similarly, the next nerve cell is multiplied and added by another value and again multiplied and added repeatedly to determine the next nerve cell value. Calculate this for all the neurons in this intermediate layers. The value of this output layer is determined by multiplying and adding the value of this intermediate layer by some weight and then again multiplying and adding repeatedly. 
For example, when an image of zero enters a sufficiently trained neural network, the computation from left to right ends up outputting large values only for those neural cells or artificial neurons that correspond to zero and other neurons do not output any signal. This is how the functionality of correctly classifying an input image zero is implemented. By this, a functionality for correctly classifying an entered image as zero is practiced. And deep learning is a neural network with increased numbers of neurons or layers. In deep learning, the number of these intermediate layers can be more than three, and in some cases more than one thousand, so the neural network is very deep. And the number of neurons is also in the tens of millions for large ones. Such a large-scale neural network would take a lot of computation time on a conventional computer because of the sheer number of multiplications and additions. In order to train such a large neural network, we had to prepare quite a lot of data to complete the training. In recent years, however, with the advent of GPUs, it has become possible to compute this multiplication and addition at very high speeds. Also, a large amount of images are now available through the internet for training this neural network. It is for these reasons that deep learning, which is such a very large neural network, has been realized. Now, I would like to explain briefly what it means to train the neural network. We will use this handwritten digit classification as an example. Let's take an example of training a classifier to identify a number as a 1 or a 2 when an image like this comes in. This time, we will use the MNIST dataset, a very popular benchmark dataset for handwritten digit classification. Anyone can download and use it from the URL. This dataset contains 60,000 black and white images of 28 by 28 pixels for training. It contains a total of 60,000 images, 6,000 for each of the handwritten digits from 0 to 9. And dataset is provided with the answers such as this is 0 and this is 1, and so on, for each image. In order to implement the handwritten digit classifier processing a classification like this is 1 and this is 2, when such images are input from this dataset, firstly we need to design this neural network according to the dataset. In this case, the input image is 28 by 28 pixels, so we prepare 784 input neurons, which is 28 by 28. As explained earlier, input neurons in the image classification are the equivalent of retinal cells in the human eye, the part that converts the light entered the eyes to the electric signal. In the computer, the brightness value of the image is used as the input neuron value. And for the output neuron, in this case, we want to classify 10 types of images from 0 to 9, so prepare 10 pieces of output neurons corresponding to the numbers 0 to 9. In this case, there are two layers, but we prepare an appropriate number of layers as intermediate layers and set the number of neurons in each layer appropriately. I say appropriate here because there is no single correct number of neurons in particular when it comes to image classification with neural network. We try various number of neurons and number of layers, and if we can achieve higher performance classification among them, we decide that this setting is better. After designing the neural network in this way, the next step is to consider this connection weight W, that is, the strength of the synaptic connection between the input and output neurons. We initialize the weight W, which is the value of the multiplier when multiplied and added against the electrical signal of the input neuron. The weight W is initialized by a random number. The neural network created in this way is the equivalent of a baby's brain. This is the neural network before training. And to train this neural network, we input an image to this neural network from the training data and compute from left to right like this. 
Since the initial values are random, we do a left-to-right calculation by multiplying and adding by random values, and again multiplying and adding by random values repeatedly. Then, of course, the classification result becomes random too. The input image is 1, but it turns out that the neuron corresponding to 6 is 0.3 and has the largest electric signal, whereas neuron corresponding to 1 outputs only a small amount of electric signal. However, we know the answer in advance that this image is 1 in this training data, so based on that information, adjust this connection weight W a little to make the output close to 1.0 on 1 if inputting 1, and make neuron corresponding to other numbers output values close to 0.0. .0. Then, input another image. For example, we input the image 3 and calculate from left to right. In the first stage, the neural network mistakenly classifies it as another number, but we know that the input image is 3, so we adjust this connection weight W slightly so that the neuron for 3 outputs 1.0 and the other neurons 0.0. .0. This processes, for example, for this MNIST training, adjust this connection weight W until we have shown 600,000 images, which means we showed one image for 10 times, then we will be able to train this neural network. As the training advances, you can see the optimization is taking place so that only the correct neurons output the value 1.0 to this input image and other neurons are 0, not outputting the value. Thus, the connection weights are given the random numbers at first, but use the training data to adjust this connection weight W so that only the correct neurons corresponding to the input data output the value. This is what it means to train the neural network in an image classification problem. Once training neural network is done, no training data is needed. And by saving the architecture of this neural network, neurons and the strength of synapse connection of the neurons, which is the value of connection weight W, we can enable our neural network to correctly identify images not seen during training and classify it as two.